my name is Shola Adeshaki, for the record. Yes. Uh, totally glad to be here. So 20 years ago, I qualified as a chartered accountant. And um, I was excited, yes. It's okay to clap if you want to clap for me. Yeah. I was excited because I'd always dreamt of becoming an accountant, becoming so wealthy, you know, controlling figures, vacationing around the world, living the baby girl life, even though that is a current time phenomenon. In those days, there was nothing like baby girl life. We just wanted to live an amazing life. You know, all of those things we saw in movies, vacationing, planes, business class, just going around the world. Now, I got my first qualification, got the second one, got the third one, and I got accounting qualifications from three different continents. How many continents? Three. However, I couldn't reconcile my qualifications and my financial status. So I was a chartered accountant, I am still a chartered accountant, but my, my, my finances were scattered and all over the place. So that baby girl life was not materializing. So first year after I started working, second year, third year, and at some point I landed a very good job that was paying me close to half a million about 15 years ago. But then at the end of the month, month in, month out, I couldn't even say this was what I was doing with my money. Yeah, the inflows were coming in, the outflows were going out. And I know as we would usually conclude, in those days there was nothing like village people. These days, in this part of the world, when you hear village people, you know what it means. I thought I had spiritual problems, well, because how would you reconcile? I wasn't married. I didn't have so much responsibilities. My father was quite well to do. He was also supporting me. I became the finance manager of my company, but two weeks after salary was paid, I would be broke. I would be writing an IOU form. Do you know what IOU means? Like an advance. Give me some money, you know, and I'll give it back to you at the end of the month. That was my life. It was frustrating. And then over time, I realized that we go to school to learn how to become a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant, a chartered accountant, you know, certifications. But we do not necessarily, necessarily become financially literate in the process. Are you with me? So there's a difference between normal education and financial literacy. Unfortunately, back then, you know, retrospectively, there were no formal structures to teach people how to make, manage, multiply money. I learned those things through the hard knocks of life. I changed jobs at a whim without, you know, thoroughly or carefully considering it because I thought I had qualifications. I left a well-paying job and then I, you know, just assumed that two, two months, one month down the line, I would land another good job. That good job did not come first year, second year, third year. And so I dedicated and devoted my time and my life into studying how there can be a convergence, a reconciliation between what we are thought in school and how we pan out in terms of financial prosperity. You see, at the end of the day, some of you are reading, surveying, and you know, the lady that was with me told me some, you know, very beautiful course she was studying. You're reading mechanical engineering, but if you take a moment to just think through it, since you stepped into school, how many of your courses have taught you how to actually make, manage, and multiply money? So you see, the issue is that there are no systems, like I already said, there are no structures in place to teach us how to make and manage and multiply this money. And that's where the issue is because year in, year out, you're making the money, you cannot even account for your money. 
And that's the reason I teach the principle of financial literacy. There are a lot of PhD holders around the world in Nigeria where I reside, a lot of master's degree holders that are very broke. And yet, you have people in Balogun Market. Balogun Market is a popular market in Lagos, where you have women who did not finish primary school turning over billions on a monthly basis. It is not hearsay. These are people I interact with. And so that corroborated my research and my study that coming to school does not prepare you on how you can become financially free or financially fit. You have got, you know, to teach yourself if the system is not teaching you. Unfortunately, most of our parents do not even know the difference. They, it's not as if they are better. You know, we blame our parents. We say a lot of things. But you see, there are no governmental systems. The financial ecosystem is not even, you know, designed to teach anybody. So you come to school, you land your first job. Who is teaching you how to save? Well, in those days, I am Gen X. So in between you and I, there's still Gen Y. But I've come to tell you that Gen Z, you are the most blessed of all generations. And I'll tell you why. If you want to clap for yourselves, clap for yourselves now. You see, a lot of things have happened in the financial ecosystem, in the financial space over the last four years. And things are just about to get better. So even at home, nobody thought us financial literacy. All I saw going up was, there's no money. And when the money comes, what happens? We have spent the money. You see mommy and daddy, you know, talking about money. Nobody is teaching me how to save. Nobody is teaching me how to budget. Nobody is saying anything. You go to school and my slides coming up. So I'm showing you a few uh, pictures from childhood, no literacy. I get into primary school, no literacy. I get into High school, there's pressure. Oh, this person's father has a driver. Oh, this person is wearing this type of shoes. No literacy. Then I finish college or what you call uni. No literacy still. So at what point do we start to educate ourselves? So if our parents would not teach us, if uh, the schools would not teach us, but hopefully things are changing. You see, in the United States, I hear that. There are about 25 states, according to CBNC, that are introducing financial literacy legislation. In Nigeria, in 2011, the Central Bank of Nigeria embarked, you know, on a financial literacy journey. They did a survey that showed that about 46.3 people, 46.3 percent of, you know, the population of Nigeria were financially excluded meaning they did not have a clue about how to manage their money. And you see, the wealth of individuals is the wealth of the nation. If the people are impoverished, the nation cannot move forward. Most times we are looking up to our presidents, to our state governors and all of those people to do stuff. But at our own individual levels, there are things to do. So having said all of this, I have said because of financial literacy, I went through a couple of, you know, financial mishaps, if I would call them so. What has happened? What have I observed? What have I seen? And what is the way forward? In the last four years, there have been a, 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 a flow or an awakening, so to say, in the financial ecosystem. How many of you have at least one financial app on your phone? Either for budgeting, either for saving. Can I see by a show of hand? Right here, you have at least a financial app. 10 years ago, it was, it was not so. So what has happened is that what our parents could not do for us, what schools could not do for us, financial technology. Let me say, first of all, technology has done for us. By faith or by providence or by, because, I mean, if you look through the whole thing, it's not as if the government said, okay, guys, let's work with you guys in the private sector and let's come up with, you know, apps that would help people manage their money. We just found out that we are here and there are apps helping us. So we should be grateful. 
for to providence or to whoever you know started that um that uh, that trend of financial uh technology apps and uh, you know resources now before i go on let me quickly say that i already mentioned that financial literacy is different from normal education so you are in school you have been taught how to become a mechanical engineer but financial literacy means that you are learning the right mindset, the right knowledge, and the right skill set to manage your finances and to take better financial decisions. Three things. Mindset. Now, you have to put aside that mindset of my father is not wealthy. There are a lot of people who did not come from well-to-do homes who are billionaires. I mean, when I was seated there, I was reading the story of a lady in America She's actually Nigerian, and right now she's earning about 105 million naira per year, you know? And then I, I, I read what she has gone through, and I'm like, see, sometimes your, your background does not even, you know, determine where you can get to. Knowledge, mindset, and the necessary skill set would help you with your finances, would help you with your quest, you know, for attaining wealth. So I haven't said the definition of financial literacy. For us as the Gen Z, you know, the generation of the Zoomers. How do we leverage financial technology? We do not want to wait until we become 30s, 40s, 50s before we begin to, you know, excel, before we begin to make money, before we begin to live the baby girl and the baby boy lives. Right, right here and now we can leverage technology to embrace financial wealth literacy. Again, the mindset, the knowledge, and the skill set that would help you take informed decisions regarding your finances. I tell people there are three things to do to money, and that's what everybody at whatever level does. The richest man in the world and the poorest man in the world. We are all a function of how we can make manage and multiply money. I call it the three M's of money. That's it. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and the richest person, I mean, the poorest person. Of course, we do not have the statistics of that person. What differentiates one person from the other is the ability to what? Make, manage, and multiply money, which is financial literacy. So as Gen Z, technology is here to help us. Today, they are saving apps, there are budgeting apps. There are investment apps. Six years ago, I wanted to buy US shares, stocks, you know. And um, I was so desperate. And they said, because I didn't have a social security number, I couldn't buy US shares. So I wanted to find a way around it, but I just, you know, let it go. Today, on this phone, I have got Amazon shares. I have got Google shares. I have got Facebook shares. All the companies that I spend my money on, I buy their shares because that's my compensation. In Nigeria, the telecommunications provider that I use, I don't want to mention names, I bought their shares. The bank that I bank with, I bought their shares because you see, where I put my money, I must also rip from. But why am I giving those examples? Just because technology has made life a lot easier, we can better make, we can better manage, and we can better multiply money. And the good thing is, I just told you I have Amazon shares. One Amazon share as of, well, about a month ago when I checked, was about $3,200. Convert that to Nigeria. How would I be able to buy just one share? But you see, the good thing is that right now, today, you can buy what we call fractional shares. That means every month you can buy $10 worth of Amazon, $10 worth of Google, $10 worth of any share of your choice. And you know what? You get the same email that the highest shareholder gets. Because with your fractional share, you are a part owner of a company. What has made all of this happen? Technology. So Gen Z, the Zoomers, this is one of the best times to be alive. You can actually become a billionaire at any age, at 20, at 21, at 22, at 19, at any time. Because the world has become a very small global community 
the lines between continents and countries are blurrier. You, you can be in, this is Ottawa, right? You can be in Ottawa and be consulting for people in Ottawa. Do you hear that? You can be in Lagos and you are consulting and earning dollars from people in Los Angeles. That's what technology has done. That's what technology can do for you. So my question and my challenge is, what are you doing with your phone? Are you just on social media? Are you just, yeah, those things are good. And don't get me wrong, technology has its ills too. But the good thing is that there are so many good sides of it that you can leverage. As I wrap up, three things to do to money. Make it, manage it, multiply it. Embrace financial literacy. Discard all of those mindsets, limiting beliefs. Oh, in Nigeria, you can never be poor. I mean, you can never be rich. Only the corrupt can be rich. And all of those things that we say. In my own business, I made the highest revenue during COVID. This year, just six months, within my investment club, we have invested over one billion. And then some people are still saying, there's no money in Nigeria. So discard those limiting beliefs, which is mindset. Get knowledge. This is part of it. You shouldn't stop here. Follow those who know. On social media. Get on social media. YouTube channels. Learn what it means to be financially literate. And the third one, the skill set. Let me leave you with this acronym that I call CREST. C, to make, manage, and multiply money, you need collaboration skills. There's no time to go into that. You need to learn how to make money with people, business, business, combined business. There are a lot of startup businesses that are currently funded by Gen Z in Nigeria and all around the world. And they are swimming in billions of Naira. Example, place that. Anyway, R, risk management. The more risk you're able to take, the more money you're able to make, right? E, earning and expense management skills. Some people know how to make money. They don't know how to manage it. There's a way. You can be in school and you're still earning on a constant basis. There are ways to doing it. Robert Kiyosaki in his book, Cash Flow Quadrant, says you can make money as an employer, as a self-employed, as a business owner, or as an investor. He doesn't have to do with age. Warren Buffett bought his first land, 40 acres, when he was 14. He bought his first stocks at 10. He's still a multi-billionaire, one of the 10 richest men in the world. Expense. It is not all you make that you spend. Your pocket money, your whatever. You don't have to spend everything. Well, S, saving and investment skill. I tell people, saving is putting money aside. Investing is putting money to work. You need to understand the dynamics. And the final one is what? I already said it. Technology. Use it well. Thank you so much.